against Bitcoin. It's going up forever. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin, the number one daily live Bitcoin show on YouTube, Twitter, Rumble. And we are on Twitch, but there's only one guy that ever shows up on Twitch. But anyways, we cover breaking news, culture and mimetic warfare. And I bring on Bitcoiners from all around the world, from the biggest names to the everyday Bitcoiner. And we will be your guide through the separation of money and state. And we're seeing exactly that happen on the Twitterverse, the world is waking up to the very idea of separating money and state, and you just love to see it. As a Bitcoiner, we're on the front lines. We've been covering this for a long time. We've been seeing the writing on the wall, and now everyone is waking up to the idea that maybe you want to get a money that isn't controlled by a small cabal of government officials and bankers. And on that note, as you guys can tell from today's title, Edward Snowden predicts that a nation state will reveal they've been stacking Bitcoin in 2024. And we're going to explain why they're going to do that. You know, we're, we're going to cover the fact that Bitcoin is nuking every fiat currency in the world. TLDR, fiat currencies around the world are getting decimated by Bitcoin. And you guys are on the front lines. And if you want to protect yourself, if you want to protect your purchasing power, then the answer is simply Bitcoin. Plus, and the numbers today, guys, we got another reverse Kramer indicator. You just love to see it. Shout out to Jim Kramer. He just continues to double down on his anti-Bitcoin stance, which means, guys, we are not even close to topping yet. The price is about to go nuclear, especially when you get the inverse Jim Kramer, because, hey, he's like 100% strike rate on every call he's ever made. If you just do the opposite, you should probably be in the green. So keep it up, Jim. Really, really appreciate it. We're like really, truly from the bottom of my heart, keep talking bad about Bitcoin because that just means there's so much room to run in Bitcoin. And of course, I'm not alone today. We are switching it up a little bit. Nico's at Madeira. He's at the Bitcoin Atlantis conference right now. I talked to him this morning. He's still in the airport. He's probably on his flight right now. But I've got a special guest for you guys today. Actually, a special co-host for you guys today. We are bringing on our Zoomer intern for social media, Bryson. So we got a Zoomer take on today's show. We're throwing him to the wolves, guys. So be, you know, be kind of nice to him, but you guys could savage him. It's all good. Anyways, Bryson, thank you so much for coming today. I, and I'm super hyped to get a Zoomer's take on not only today's show, but helping us on the back end. You guys are digitally native, I, and it, man, it's just so beautiful to see the younger generation understand why is why they need Bitcoin. Even if you are a, a broke college student, at least you understand what the problem is. But before I bring on the guest, uh, Bryson, let's uh, tell me that story you just told me about how your dad or your stepdad or girlfriend's dad watched this, and then he hipped you to simply, and here you are, bro. Yeah, so so my girlfriend's dad started talking to me about Bitcoin like nine months ago, and initially I kind of brushed him off. I was like, I don't know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, <laughs> but but after seeing some things, I was like, wow, well, you know, I don't know how I'm supposed to graduate college, get a decent job, and have a good life for me and my family. And and Bitcoin was kind of just a flashing bulb, you know. Um, Bitcoin is hope, right? So uh, he he introduced me to Simply. I went over to their house. He had your guys' live stream up, and I was like, holy crap, I like these guys. Watch your content. I hit up Nico. I said, "Hey, do you guys have an internship position?" So if he's watching, he's he's probably losing his losing his mind right now seeing me on here. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just excited to be here. Let's go. Well, shouts out to uh, the girlfriend's dad. Uh, yeah. You know, not to dox him or anything, <laughs> but man, shouts out to you. You're the real MVP. Super hyped that you know we can hit all generations here on Simply Bitcoin. That we provide the signal and the entertainment for literally everyone. Ah, man, that just felt good. Thank. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Bryson's girlfriend's dad, the real MVP here. And shouts out to Bryson. You know, uh, apparently you're getting you're getting uh, you're getting savage in the chat. So welcome to the fire. <laughs> anyways, anyways, we're not alone. We got a guest today. Shouts out to my boy Andres, a.k.a. at Son of Sat on Twitter. And uh, we're going to talk about his new project that he's working on, Viva Bitcoin. So Andres, 
Good to have you here. Maybe maybe you want to hit on the transition, flip, mirror your camera so they can see the shirt. But anyways, Andres, uh, TLDR, what is Viva Bitcoin? What, what are you working on, bro? Uh, so, um, hey, thank you for having me. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, Zoomer intern. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so Viva Bitcoin is uh, something that was born out of a um, just someone very special that I met at uh, Pacific Bitcoin uh, 2022. Uh, then on 2023, we met again. His name's Tony. Um, and he had this idea of pairing up uh, Hispanic, uh, Latino Bitcoiners here in the U.S. that are bilingual. And uh, the idea of Viva Bitcoin is sort of like bringing everybody together uh, in that space and uh, sort of like amplifying the voice and, and sort of like reaching out to all the Hispanics uh, and um, Spanish speaking people here in the U.S. and orange filling them, like teaching them about Bitcoin, what it is, why we need it and why uh, Latin America and also uh, why uh uh, Bitcoin needs uh, Latin America for for you know for the for, um, the growth of adoption. So that's a little bit about it. We can get uh, more into the weeds later and what we're doing, what we're sponsoring, uh, what uh, sort of like conferences we're hitting this year. Um, and the group is growing, uh, so it's a very exciting. Uh, it's a very exciting group. Love it. Love it. Well, I'm excited for the, today's conversation. You know, again, uh, we're, we're all Latinos here at Simply Bitcoin. Well, at least Nico and I, even though I know you guys think my accent and, you know, my complexion, you might not remember that, uh, you know, we're, we're Latinos here, man. Anyways, let's get into the show. We got a lot to talk about. But before I do that, go check out BitcoinWell.com. Go sign up today. If you sign up today and I believe tomorrow you are in the running to win a free passport so go to bitcoinwell.com slash app slash rewards dash point bitcoinwell.com is the self custody by default bitcoin platform on a mission to enable independence they are also a publicly traded company and have the ticker btcw period v they just expanded to america they're canadian and man the best part about them guys is they want your free feedback they want you guys to give them feedback make sure they make the best bitcoin self-custody platform possible so savage them in the chat dm adam the ceo hit bitcoin well and get in touch with them let them know your pain points and they will fix them anyways guys let's get into the show the Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seeds Do It Yourself Kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamp seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to hodl your bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul stamp your seed on stamp seed of course guys we made it easy for you guys go scan the qr code uh, I know everyone yells at us like, how do I scan the QR code when I'm on my phone? Uh, you know, scan the QR code, watch it on YouTube, put it on your television and scan the QR code. And it'll take you right to the website. Make sure you are not, I repeat, you are not keeping your private seed phrase on a piece of paper in your sock drawer. We all know you guys are doing it anyways. Anyways, let's get to the numbers. We are over here on Clark Moody's dashboard. In my opinion, just the OG dashboard. There's a lot of good dashboards. So shouts out to everyone making dashboards sports but get into the numbers i think the most important number here i say it all the time is the block height tiktok next block it's almost like bitcoin works exactly as designed it's almost like every 10 minutes there's a heartbeat that audits the bitcoin network and shows you it's still running and look at this we're at block height of 832,560 and the bitcoin price is currently 61,690 i repeat 61,680 oh, they, they didn't want me to repeat it anyway the stats per dollar aka how much the, Bitcoin you can buy for a single dollar, a.k.a. how much Bitcoin is worth in dollar terms or how much your dollar 
is worth in Bitcoin terms. It's currently at 1,622. Man, we're getting closer to that 1K sats per dollar. Man, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, man. Our dollar's not going as far as it used to. We're getting absolutely wrecked out here. Anyways, the total percentage of Bitcoin that will ever be issued is currently at 93.52%. The market cap in fiat terms is $1.21 trillion. We're inching closer to the silver market cap, guys. I think silver is at like 1.27 or 1.23, I forget. So uh, we're, we're coming for silver, guys. We are coming for silver, demonetizing all of the precious metals. You just love to see it. Anyways, to realize monetary inflation, taking fiat currencies to school is 1.74%. And that's going to, uh, you know, it's going to go up very quickly, roughly in April. The Bitcoin versus gold market cap, still so much room to run in the hard money gang. We're inching closer to 10% of the gold market cap. We are currently at 8.76%. The total public lightning capacity is 4,423.34 BTC. The hash rate the last 90 days is roughly around 533.3 exahashes. And the pending fees, wow, 12.61 BTC. Uh, it's looking like uh, it's looking like people are trying to transact on chain. I wonder what's going on. And the blocks to having is 7,440 with the having estimate roughly April 20th, 2024. Or let's let's hope uh, life is memes and memes is life. Anyways, of course, before we go on, we got a spot Bitcoin ETF update. So you can see, man, they are hoovering up so much Bitcoin. And, and I got a new metric here for you guys. So let's just cover some of this. You know, Grayscale, there people are leaving Grayscale. They hold they still hold up the bulk of the Bitcoin at four hundred and forty one thousand eight hundred and fifteen Bitcoin. But the Bitcoin BlackRock ETF is man. Th- it is starting to pull away. It's at 151,536 Bitcoin and the fidelity. It's keeping up, you know, 103,407 Bitcoin. And they're just head and shoulders above everything else. You know, RX at 33,000 purpose Bitcoin ETFs at 29,000. Bitwise ETF is at 24,000. So, you know, it's looking like we're seeing some some winners in the spot Bitcoin ETF market. But the update I wanted to tell you guys today is we saw record Bitcoin ETF flows yesterday. So 600 and wait, $673 million of inflows and a total trading volume of $7.7 billion. Absolutely incredible. And guys, I highly recommend you go watch the IRL that Nico did last night with Alex Thorne. He really broke down the numbers and really explained that maybe this time is different because the spot Bitcoin ETF is opening Bitcoin up to a whole new market. And you already know liquidity begets liquidity. The more liquidity Bitcoin gets, the bigger number can go up. And it's just beautiful to be a part of. And here we are. We're the frontline soldiers. What's the the meme you guys created? We front ran Wall Street. We front ran everyone. And it's just beautiful to be a part of. All right, guys, let's get into the numbers today. Uh, I actually mashed a few clips together for you guys. So I'm starting off with this jumping off point. Neil Jacobs on Twitter tweeted, Jim Cramer, you know, this video made the rounds on Twitter last night. Jim Cramer, what's Bitcoin ever done for humanity? And you can just tell the pain. He's missing out. He's foaming mowing into it and you can just tell it he's doing the best to cover for i don't know who it is but you know reverse kramer indicator activated again you just love to see it and for for you guys on on the stream so i clipped together a few clips uh we had joe kern yesterday talking about bitcoin and i just it's a theme here i want to kind of continue to elaborate on the idea that Popular culture, I wouldn't even say popular, corporate press is going to be constantly talking about Bitcoin. And let's just juxtapose the difference between Jim Cramer and Joe Kern. They're both on, you know, corporate press. One's anti-Bitcoin, one's pro-Bitcoin. And, you know, let, let me just play this because, you know, Jim Cramer asked the question, what has Bitcoin done for humanity? And I would say Joe Kern just kind of shuts it down. And then we'll talk about this. Check this out. It's underperformance, okay? Okay, let's suppress it. I, I, I don't want to. What has Bitcoin ever done for mouth, mankind? Do you ever, are you ever Bitcoin, a Bitcoin phone? Bitcoin phone? Watson, come here, I need you. I mean, what is it? Well, coming up, United Healthcare is uh, apparently in. Which goes to the idea of is this a store of value? I don't think it or does. Is it, is, is it speculation? I don't think. No, I don't think that does. I, 
If you have something that's the best performing asset over five, 10, and 15 year it's periods, a it's a store value. I'm ready to say that. I'm okay. ready to give it the. On the record. What has Bitcoin done for humanity? Um, I don't know, Jim Cramer. Maybe it's protecting us all from the chaos of clown world fiat life. I don't know. It's the best performing asset for the last 15 years. Uh, best performing asset the last five to 10 years. Uh, what has it done, Jim Cramer? I don't know. It's increased our purchasing power while all these politicians and central bankers have decimated our purchasing power. Uh, sounds like it's doing something good for humanity. Plus, let's not even get into all of the intricacies here of Bitcoin helping people that are being prosecuted escape their countries and, you know, uh, maybe just improve the fiat network in general by 10x. It is superior money technology, Jim Cramer. But hey, you know, I, I have a kind of a, a special place in my heart for Jim Cramer because without his ridiculous takes, I probably wouldn't be a Bitcoiner. I, I've told this story before, but before I was a Bitcoiner, and it was sort of roughly around 2016. I asked my friend, uh, hey, man, you have some stocks. How do you trade stocks? And no joke, guys, he sat me down <laughs> to watch Jim Cramer's Hard Money Show. And at the time, I was like, oh, maybe this guy knows what he's talking about. You know, maybe I stole the horn from him. I don't know. Anyways, uh, in, in hindsight, you know, seven years later, Anytime I see Jim Cramer, I always think of my friend who loved Jim Cramer. I'm like, man, I really hope he doesn't take Jim Cramer's words on these calls because it really does feel like Jim Cramer is, I don't know, like a, a signal for people that know what's going on. Like, I'm sure... I, this is me speculating, but it feels like he gives bad calls on purpose. Like, I don't think he's dumb. I, 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 you know, he's, he's good at his job, but like, it feels like if you're in the know, then you know that when Jim, Jim Cramer says something good about a coin or a stock or an investment, you do the exact opposite. And then there's people out there, the average citizen retail that, that believes in what he's saying, and they just get absolutely devastated. The, the inverse Cramer fund, I think there is one out there, you know, the inverse Cramer tracker. It's in the green. It's like the best thing ever. If if you literally just do the opposite of what Jim Cramer says, I am you're gonna make you're gonna be making money. Oh man, like Jim Cramer, bless your heart. And and you know, keep talking bad about Bitcoin. I want this reverse Cramer indicator to continue to go up. So hey, here we are, guys. If you thought we were topping out right now. I think we still have a long way to run. I, it, today is going to be the close of uh, the February month candle. And it's going to be, unless something crazy happens by the end of the day, it's going to be all-time high monthly close on Bitcoin. And we're still, what, 7,400 plus blocks out from the halving. This has never happened before in the history of Bitcoin. It really does feel like this time is different. It seems like this year might be nuclear when it comes to Bitcoin price. And you just need to stack. Make sure you're constantly stacking. Make sure you're taking your Bitcoin off exchanges. As you guys saw yesterday, we all know what's going to happen. Some of these exchanges are going to go down. They've had years to prepare. So you do not want to get, one, caught on the sidelines, and two, get caught in another debacle where these exchanges go down. Take your Bitcoin into custody. This is the way. Anyways, let's go to Andres because, uh, oh, look at this. Zoomer on the <laughs> chat. Andres, uh, what's your thoughts on Jim Cramer? And then and then maybe let's talk about, and I didn't even say, Joe Kern is everyone's favorite Bitcoin podcaster. He might have like one of the biggest audience and he's just, he officially on record said Bitcoin is the best store of value, period. This is the way, man. Shouts out to Joe Kern. All right, Andres, what's your thoughts on all this? Okay, so Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer is just a meme that just keeps writing itself, right? Like he's he's I think I think the only outperforming Wall Street or or or, or like uh person that's in the in the limelight that that's outperformed Cramer is Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi with her inside trader trading. Uh so yeah, so it's 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 <laughs> them two are like head to head, right? Who who's the best uh, um sort of like um who makes the best calls uh, for the market? And as far as like what has Bitcoin don done for humanity, like it hasn't happened yet. But separation of money and state. Uh, I mean, Kramer, come on, dude. That's uh, that's just a, a no brainer, right? And so, yeah, I mean, like I, I all these pundits, man. Like I, 
I, I honestly don't listen to mainstream news anymore. I'm, I'm deep in the rabbit hole. I do catch some glimpses of, uh, of like what they say. Uh, I'm mostly listening to the, you know, news about like Bukele, news about Malay. Uh, so all these pundits in the U.S., I kind of just like don't listen because I, I kind of get nauseous. Uh, a little bit and, and as an old kind of like bitcoiner it feels like just a waste of time right like i'd rather read something different uh a different perspective learn about um things that are happening in 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 latin america and africa things that are like more positive um but i know i know people like to uh you know like uh fall into these debates and and definitely they're interesting but yeah jim kramer a uh, meme that keeps writing himself um it's, it's just hilarious Love it. Love it. Yeah. And guys, uh, my my fault is Joe Kernan. Joe Kernan. Uh, for some reason, I keep thinking Joe Kernan, but Joe Kernan, the best Bitcoin podcaster in the space. Shouts out to him. And, and this really goes to what the theme I've been talking about a lot on the show is, you know, I know a lot of us Bitcoiners are very individualistic. You know, we have the meme in Bitcoin, kill your heroes. But we saw in the last year and we're going to see it happen in this year, even even stronger, I think having people in quote unquote positions that people trust them start to talk about Bitcoin. And this is good for Bitcoin. I know no one individual controls Bitcoin. No one individual we should be looking at for our Bitcoin takes, you know, D-Y-O-R, do your own research, understand why you hold Bitcoin. But Joe Kernan out here just doing Satoshi's work on CNBC on Squawk Box, just pushing that signal. The orange Bitcoin signal is going worldwide. We have crossed the Ruby of popular consciousness and it's only going to increase it's it's such a great time to be a bitcoin anyways bryson what's the zoomer take on this what's your thoughts on all this well like jim kramer i mean like i don't know how you can be such a pessimist especially like mainstream media because it's like you know i talked to my parents about this and i'm like trying to figure out you know life and i'm saying well, well how am i supposed to make sense of all of these things if you're just going to be a pessimist and say hey well yeah obviously fiat's going to zero right but if you're not willing to look into alternatives what 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 is the next generation supposed to do right and so so it doesn't make sense for people like kramer to be you know pessimists i think you need to be a realist and being a realist will lead you down the bitcoin rabbit hole right and so i think that's where you know people parents especially need to start paying attention for for their kids sake right because like my parents are in their early 50s Right. If Bitcoin takes another 10, 20, 30 years to see wide, wide scale adoption, right, they, they might not need it. Right. But but if you don't have parents who are not educated as a young person, right, you're going to find yourself in a very sticky situation when Bitcoin adoption becomes a lot more widespread. Right. And it's like people need handholding. Right. So, I mean, it's like I thought the wake up call was going to be when BlackRock, you know, created their iBit Bitcoin's trust. Um, but but clearly it hasn't. Right. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like. Do you really need, you know, Larry Fink to get on the phone, call you up and say, hey, you need a 1% allocation, right, before you buy? And I'm like, well, what, well, if you know that's, that phone call is coming in a couple of months, doesn't it make sense to still front run one, front one Wall Street to an extent today, right? Because you're going to see much better returns in, in the next 18 months. Yeah, 100 percent. And and to your point, we're seeing and I, I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot more posts of us Bitcoiners talking, you know, to, to our normie friends and family or, you know, like people they associate with. And we're all like the Bitcoin people in our lives. And now that this ETF got dropped, now that, you know, Larry Fink and the, the adults are here. You're seeing that people are actually like, oh, wow, there's a spot Bitcoin. Maybe I need to get some. Like I, I saw a lot of people yesterday on Twitter basically say that this time feels a lot different. Like the, the game has changed because people are now thinking like, oh, my God, there's a spot Bitcoin ETF. Like they're not just doing what we did, you know, for the last five, six years where we're just actively stacking, you know, the plebs out there just stacking Bitcoin here and there, basically, you know, <laughs> changing, exchanging our, our chore money, our beer money for Bitcoin. These guys are going in instantly head first millions of dollars into Bitcoin. This ETF has opened up the playing field and they want to get in. And you're seeing the inflows of, of Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the spot, Bitcoin ETFs. Like, I, I think we're all underestimating the tsunami of capital that is about to get unleashed on Bitcoin. We've only had a spot Bitcoin ETF for about a month. So it's still new in people's minds. And this year, Oh, man, we're going to see a lot of capital get into Bitcoin. And, and we're going to talk about this in the news right here, because I think we're going to get some surprises. But let's get into the news, guys. We'll cover all that right now. 
the daily news. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with the UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. I, I still haven't got Nico to redo the ad. Don't think about taking your Bitcoin off exchanges. Do it today. Get yourself a passport by Foundation Devices. And before I go into the news, uh, you know, they're, they're loving the Zoomer in here. All right. The Zoomer is doing well. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. So today's news story um, it is, you know, we, we are kind of speculating a little bit, but I think all of us Bitcoiners have been wondering, like, when does the next domino fall? We, we saw, you know, the, I forgot the Central African Republic kind of announced a Bitcoin legal tender. They kind of went full shit coin. Everyone's been speculating about Argentina is probably going to be next. Well, I just pulled up here for you guys just just to clarify your mind. You know, El Salvador made a legal tender, Bitcoin legal tender in 2021. We're in 2024 and we still haven't had one more country go into Bitcoin full head first. But we've seen at least I know it's a short time for Frame, but we've seen what Bitcoin has done for El Salvador. El Salvador, I think we saw the numbers, they're 40% positive on their Bitcoin balance. And we're going to see these next dominoes. They might happen very quickly. We will probably see maybe not just one country say they're adopting Bitcoin. We saw what Bhutan say that they're stacking Bitcoin, they're mining Bitcoin. So we're seeing these inklings. Yet, I think this year we are going to see someone of, of a, a big, big position in the world say that, yeah, we are fully Bitcoin. We're seeing what BRICS nations are doing. They're, they're actively moving away from the dollar. I think anyone that knows anything about making investments is starting to question whether treasuries are the best way to store value. We saw Bukele absolutely destroy treasuries. Basically, TLDR saying, you know, the traditional financial world is a fiat Ponzi, paper backed by paper. And this is what you guys are trusting. This is what you guys think is the best way to store value? Well, let's just go in a little more numbers. So here we got this tweet from Balaji yesterday, and it goes, Bitcoin has passed all-time highs in 30-plus countries, including China and India. And you'll see some of them. You know, Madagascar, Malawi, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nigeria, Pakistan, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Suriname, Turkey, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Angola, Argentina. The list goes on. 30 countries Bitcoin has hit all-time high. And what does this mean? When you see the Bitcoin price go all time high, what it really means as as a Bitcoiner, as someone that thinks that Bitcoin is the stable coin, that Bitcoin is the stability and the difference is the fiat currencies crumbling against Bitcoin. Well, all of these countries, their local national currencies are crumbling against the head honcho, which is Bitcoin. Of course, we all know at the very end of the day, there's a. There, there's a line here, you know, there, there's a there's a pecking order here. All the fiat currencies are beholden to the dollar and the dollar will probably be one of the last dominoes to go. And this isn't to say necessarily that Bitcoin will replace the dollar as the world reserve currency, though I personally believe it will. But that doesn't mean that it has to replace the dollar for Bitcoin to achieve its goal. And we're seeing, again, 30 plus countries their dollars or their currencies or fiat currencies are collapsing against Bitcoin. And as we always say here at, at Simply Bitcoin, you might want to get some Bitcoin just in case it catches on. And just to further drive that point, I saw this tweet this morning and, and man, like if this isn't a signal of the tide changing, I don't know what is. And here's the tweet. This is by Matthew Mazinski's, forgive me for butchering your name, at 
one base money on Twitter. He goes, it seems likely that Bitcoin will close February higher than the sterling pound, the oldest fiat currency in the world. Last last month, sterling was roughly $1.12 trillion market cap. Right now, Bitcoin's market cap is one point. What do I, what do I say? 1.2, 1.24, something like that. And hold on. Nika's texting me. I, I guess I need to check the mic. I did check my mic. Um, I, all right. Anyways, anyways, look at this chart, guys. Bitcoin versus the sterling pound, the market cap of the pound versus the market cap of Bitcoin. And you can see here, let me, let me zoom in here. You know, here's the Bitcoin price. It is better than the oldest fiat currency in the world. And I've showed you the chart before in meme review and in the numbers that usually, you know, fiat currencies don't last for for very long. It's, I think, historically roughly around like 250 years or so like that. And now Bitcoin has surpassed one of the oldest fiat currencies in the world. I think this is more signal that things are changing. And further, to double down on the idea of Bitcoin as the best currency in the world and continue to add signal to the idea of who will be next. Here's Eric Balkunis, I think is how you say his name. He's senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg. And he dropped this, uh, I think it was yesterday. No, a few days ago. And if you guys watch uh, Max Kaiser on InfoWars, he, he thoroughly elaborated on the idea that Bitcoin is demonetizing gold. Well, it's not just Bitcoiners saying this. Eric Balkunis, he's, you know, he's becoming more of a Bitcoiner, but he's still kind of a fiat maxi. It's his job to cover the fiat markets. And look at this article, this headline here. It goes, gold's pain is Bitcoin ETFs gain in store value smacked out. The initial success of the spot Bitcoin ETF has been sweetened by declines in both price and interest for gold ETFs, setting up for a battle of assets. The Bitcoin ETFs, though barely six weeks old, has taken in over $8 billion more than gold peers, already has 40% as much in assets and could pass them in size in less than two years. What does this mean, guys? It looks like Bitcoin is demonetizing gold in real time. In real time, Bitcoin is getting record-breaking ETF flows. There's $7.7 billion of trade going into Bitcoin ETFs. And we're seeing that interest in gold is dwindling, at least in interest in gold ETFs. Yes, there's central banks around the world that are stockpiling golds. But it looks like Bitcoin is starting to take the lead or at least starting to catch up in the hard money gang. And this really begs the question, which is why we titled today's show about Edward Snowden. He tweeted this yesterday and he goes, prediction, a national government will be revealed this year to have been buying Bitcoin, the modern replacement for monetary gold, without having disclosed that fact publicly. And I think the big thing, again, you know, speculating, I don't know what Edward Snowden knows. I don't know if, he, if he's leaking something or if he's actually just predicting something or whether he's framing this as I'm just predicting something but the the wording here will be revealed remember what happened with bhutan and the whole ftx collapse they the only reason we heard about that that they're mining bitcoin is because of the whole ftx debacle well we're going to see not only you know q1 where all these corporations maybe their pensions funds you know all these institutions of the world they're gonna have to reveal whether they've been buying bitcoin q1 at some point this year i i also believe we're going to see another nation state start to adopt bitcoin we're seeing what's happened with the BRICS nation we haven't covered it on the show but uh, I think it was Russia this week basically said that, oh, we're going to try to create a CBDC for uh, the BRICS nations. But let's be honest, who's going to trust them with a CBDC? I know I won't. I know I wouldn't if I was a Russian citizen or a BRICS nation citizen. And we see the writing on the walls. Bitcoiners, we understand where the world is going. It is going towards a Bitcoin standard. And you might want to get some just in case the cash is on. You still have the opportunity to buy Bitcoin under 100K. It's still cheap as far as I'm concerned. This is a long-term game. We are barely even 10% of the gold market cap. And gold's been around for thousands of years. And Bitcoin is becoming one of the fastest adopted technologies in the world. And it's going to have the network effects of money, which means it could even go even more nuclear than we've been even considering. And again... We're about to break all-time high before the halving, which has never happened before. And yet here we are, guys. If you think that this train is topping out right now, 
I think you have another thing coming and I think you need to do a little more research or watch a little more Simply Bitcoin and we'll get you bullish so that you constantly keep stacking. I say it every day. Remember the Bitcoin ABCs, always buy consistently, always buy constantly, continue to stack sets, continue to take Bitcoin into self-custody. So guys in the chat, drop what your guess is for what the next nation is. We'll cover a little few of them. We'll get some guesses. We'll see who's right. And I'm look, we're in, we're in the, about to be in the third month of the year. I'm almost convinced that we will see another domino drop on the nation state level. We say it constantly. Naib Bukele has been vindicated on his Bitcoin strategy. Michael Saylor has been vindicated on the Bitcoin strategy. And every single one of you guys has been vindicated on your Bitcoin strategy. All us 80 IQ Bitcoiners, left side of the bell curve Bitcoiners, we are geniuses at least for the next year. And then I'm sure we'll get savaged by all our friends and family. But hey, feels good to be a Bitcoiner. Just keep stacking. And and I'm sure we're going to see another domino fall in, in the, the game theory of Bitcoin. Because once one more domino falls, it's really, it's really going to, to catch like a like a like a fire across the world. Because hey, if you are the last ones holding the fiat currency bag, not only are you hurting yourself, but you're hurting your citizens. It's upon every government official out there to be looking towards a Bitcoin strategy. And hey, maybe Snowden knows something we don't know. Maybe he's just kind of, you know, leaking some sauce and just, you know, this is just a prediction, guys. Who knows? Anyways, Andres, you've been around for a while. Maybe maybe you know something with Viva Bitcoin. Oh, before I go on, shout out to Samson Mao. Maybe it's coming out of Jan 3. Maybe there's some stuff going on. We've seen he's been talking to a bunch of Latin American countries, South American countries, and uh, maybe it's a Middle Eastern country. I don't know. But we do know that these conversations are happening. And man, uh, you know what that means? Number goes up. All right. Anyway, Andres, what's your thoughts? Who? Maybe first off, who do you think is going to be next? And, and what's your thoughts on this prediction? Are we just making stuff up? Are we speculating? Or it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah, I think, I think it's a matter of when. And I also have to like sort of uh, think about how many countries have been stacking secretly, right? Like they, that's one of the like virtues or, or qualities of Bitcoin that are fascinating, right? That you can, you can stack quietly and, and no one will like truly know who is the person or, or nation state that's, that's stacking. Personally, I think I'm a little biased. I'm, I'm, I'm Hispanic, Latino. So I think it might be a, a South American nation. Uh, Samson Mao has been doing great work down there. Uh, he's been talking to a lot of presidents. Uh, so who knows? Probably Latin America will again shine. Uh, I feel, and part of the reason why I joined uh, Viva Bitcoin is because I feel that we are primed for for um, the adoption of Bitcoin. There are so many people that live here in the U.S. that have families in the in Latin America, um, and we send a lot of money over there, right? Like we send money to help our families, like fighting, like you know, the ever growing living costs that um, are like Latin, Latin governments um, subjugate people to. And so there, the amount of uh, remittances that get sent are, are astronomical. And imagine if, uh, if you're a South American uh, father, which uh, I know many that are they're working at out here in the U.S., um, and every time they send money to their family through Western Union, they have to, you know, uh, Western Union takes a, a huge chunk of their of, of what they're sending their family. So if those people get educated and introduced into Bitcoin and they sort of take that initial orange filling, they will see the, the value of just that uh, one use case, right, of, of being able to send more value of their hard work to their families down in South America or in Latin, or, or in Central America. So I, I think personally that that's the we're going to we're going to see it from Latin America for sure. I mean, we, we've seen uh, a lot of Latin Americans take a cue from Bukele's playbook and, and we've seen them conversate with Bukele. So maybe it will be a Latin American country. But one thing's for sure, they will all have to have a Bitcoin strategy sooner than later. And look, uh, people in the chat are saying kind of what I believe, too. Like Snowden probably knows a little more than we do. I, I'm sure he's kind of leaking this as like, oh, this is a prediction. I don't know. Maybe I know something. Maybe I don't. Wink, wink. But. The game theory is heating up and we're on the front lines and we get to cover this. The next one, hopefully it's fireworks. Hopefully it's like one of the 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 top uh, GDP countries in the world, because right now, you know, as much as I love El Salvador, you know, Andres is wearing the El Salvador hat. 
they're a tiny country. I think I think the total population is roughly around like a million people. Mm. So like. Once a a top, and I, this might sound bad, but once like a top tier nation, you know, once or a first world nation adopts Bitcoin, it's really going to set the dominoes in the world on fire. And that's also going to be cute for people out there, the everyday person be like, oh, wow, X country adopted Bitcoin. Maybe I want to get some just in case it catches on. You, you know, you might want to be doubling down on your stacks right now. You might want to not eat food for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Drink fast, uh, water fast coming up. Sell your chairs. Sell all everything to buy more Bitcoin. Anyways, Bryson, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, do you have any insights? What's your dad telling? you your stepdad or girlfriend's dad over there what's your thoughts you're hitting a lot there so i don't want to rehash anything you talk about too often but i mean like you're bringing up russia putin talking about bricks and i'm like like the whole idea of bricks should should be indication enough that the fiat system has failed right um the, the idea that people need to get off fiat standard right? because it's like if using the u.s dollar as a world reserve currency has quantifiably made your life better right in, in whatever country it might be right in america russia china doesn't really matter then then why would you want to get off of that um, so, so people are quantifiably doing worse, right? So, so that has brought the, the idea of bricks, right? Now, now th they don't have the right solution because they're, they're trying to use gold, not Bitcoin, right? And eventually they might, you know, they might pivot to Bitcoin, right? But, but I mean, like America, I can tell you is going to be probably the last country to adopt something like uh, Bitcoin, right? If they're not smart, because all well, the U S is probably the most, the, the best funded retirement home uh, on the planet. Right. And, and there's just, there's no second best. Right. And I mean, like game theory to bit game theory is to Bitcoin, what, you know, financial analysis is to business. Right. So, so, so once one significant country adopts Bitcoin, it, it is going to be a race to the bottom, right? All of these countries are going to turn on the money printers to buy as much Bitcoin as humanly possible. Right. And, and, and so it's a matter of time when that happens. Right. And when that does happen, you, you better hope you've got enough Bitcoin, which, who knows? Yeah, Zoomer interns on fire today. <laughs> Shouts out to the Zoomers. This kid gets it. This is why he joined the Simply Bitcoin team. All right, bet. All right, guys, let, before we move on to the, the culture and talk about what Andres is working on, I want to cover some of these, uh, these guesses over here in the chat. First, we got XX. He goes, BRICS will absolutely have to adopt Bitcoin if they want any chance at all to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Sean B says Russia. We have this knock say Argentina, question mark. We have Matthew J says next nation is Japan or Russia and the whole world will follow except US and China. We have Nigeria. That's Sam Stone 4141. We have MG Smith says Saudi Arabia. They've got the energy and they need to pivot away from the petrodollar for survival. <laughs> Nigel Lowry, the independent Republic of Opti stand. Uh, <laughs> trolling, trolling. Jose Cuervo, Antarctica. Yeah, they're trolling the penguins. Uh, <laughs> someone up top said uh, Qatar just met with, with Bukele, so maybe that's where it's going. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So, uh, Canada says, good morning. Qatar visited Bukele some weeks ago. Uh, higher calling says Saudi Arabia. People are laughing at BRICS. Uh, let's see. Someone says Texas. We, we're saying nation states. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think that's all everyone has said in the chat. Anyways, as we can see, guys. Oh, next nation is Taiwan. Yeah, I think uh, I think Samson Mao was talking to Taiwan recently. Man, as you can tell, we can all speculate. Um, I'm just I'm kind of leaning towards the idea that maybe. Snowden has a little better idea. Maybe he's having these conversations and he's just kind of throwing it out there as a prediction. The like will be revealed copy in that tweet just kind of, I think, is signal to the idea that like he might know something here. I don't know. We're speculating, but we all know what's happening. The game theory of Bitcoin is taking hold on the world, whether it's getting into a spot Bitcoin ETF like institutions, whether it's your friends and family FOMOing into the Bitcoin price or a nation state adopting Bitcoin. It's been three years, roughly three years since the Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador. It's about time we see another country take the deep dive into Bitcoin, and uh, we'll see. We'll see who it is. We'll be covering it when it happens, and I'm sure it's going to be happening sometime this year. All right, guys. Before we move on to the culture, go 
get yourself a copy of Bitcoin Evangelism. This is what the goal is here. We are all Bitcoin evangelists. I, I jokingly say, you know, we're like the guys that go door to door knocking like, hey, guys, have you heard about Bitcoin? Uh, I have a solution for you. It is Bitcoin. Anyways, go buy it on Amazon. Bitcoin Evangelism by our friend Brian DeMint. It explains what Bitcoin is. It gives you a take on how you can combat the narratives of FUD lines, how you can get your shit coiner friend to start to understand Bitcoin and the goal of getting 10 million plus 8 billion people on the Bitcoin standard. This is the book for you. Go to Amazon, buy Bitcoin Evangelism. Actually, if I remember correctly, if you hit up Brian DeMint on Orange Pill app, he will sell it to you directly in SAT. So maybe you don't want to sell your SATs, but you can get it any way possible. Anyways, let's get to the culture. The Daily Culture. Y'all already know the deal here. Kaboom Racks. Kaboom Racks. All right, kaboomracks.com, the best place to buy, sell, and host your ASICs. Get in touch with the Kaboom Racks team. Shouts out to my boy Alex over there. If you have questions, if you've been wondering whether you should mine, whether you have good enough electricity rates to make it profitable, whether the S9 will be profitable for perpetuity, or whether you should be waiting for the new latest ASIC to drop. I know I know, my boy Alex is super excited about the latest drops of ASIC. Get in touch with the team at Kaboom Racks. You can join them on their Telegram group. I'm pretty sure it's t.me slash Kaboom Racks. Or just go to their website, kaboomracks.com, and get in touch with the team over there. Make sure you understand whether you should or should not be mining bitcoin but get your asics there guys the the team's team stellar a plus they will give you that white glove service on bitcoining bitcoin mining anyways let's go to andres andres bro all right he's a, a friend of the show a personal friend and uh, you're working on bitcoin bro so what yeah. is viva bitcoin what's the goal you can recap what you said in the beginning of the show but what, what, what are you working on over there, bro? What's, what is Viva it's, Bitcoin? Let's start with there. What is Viva Bitcoin? It's super exciting. Um, so the core values of Viva Bitcoin are education and circular, circular economy. So we, um, as a group, uh, and w- which is funny, we all met at, at conferences, right? Like, um, you know, we, a lot of us spend time on, on Twitter um, now X, uh, you know, like hanging out with everybody, hearing all the different perspectives. And we noticed that like in the U.S., there weren't really many spaces catered to like Hispanics or, or Spanish speaking people. And so I, I met with Tony, uh, who's the, the founder of the of the of the organization. And, uh, you know, immediately he told me, hey, uh, I have this idea. Um, I would like you to join and sort of like help spread the word. And the thing has sort of like snowballed uh, for me. Um, now we're uh, I'm uh, thankfully sponsored by by Tony and Viva Bitcoin to assist uh, many conferences in the U.S. Uh, we'll be attending uh, El Salvador as well. Uh, we're going to be uh, sort of having some live interviews there. We're going to be holding uh, recording some sort of like a little documentary about the experience. Uh, so yeah, so essentially it's, it's about spreading the word about Bitcoin in the U.S. and Latin America in in spanish and so we have every monday um eight um the 8 p.m standard time every monday we hold a space on on twitter or x and uh we're we've we've already had some great um uh guests um speaking sort of like uh, by the way the, the space is in spanish fully spanish so you have to be either bilingual or you know, be a, a Spanish speaker, um, and so we have a, just a, a very tight, tightly knit group of people who are very passionate about Bitcoin. We're we're 100% maxis, uh, and uh, which is which is something that 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 throughout like all the spaces we've, we've held over over the period of like a month and a half, we've noticed that in Latin America, the 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 idea or the attractiveness uh, the attractiveness of uh, shit coins is still uh, very latent. Uh, you know, the lure of, of quick riches. So we are trying to, in our space, educate people, bring people that, that are U.S. Bitcoiners that speak Spanish. We had uh, Sean Harris, uh, shout out to him. Um, and, you know, we, we're just trying to have a, a, com- a deep conversation and, and grow the space um, to educate uh, fellow Bitcoiners or fellow future to be Bitcoiners in Latin America uh, to sort of only look at Bitcoin and get past the idea of quick, quick riches. Um, 
I mean, we know that most people get wrecked, right? When when you're trying to just chase a shiny object in the crypto space. So we're trying to um, educate people. And uh, when it comes to the circular economy, we are uh, sponsoring a lot of um, uh, Bitcoin only uh, businesses in Latin America, and we're sponsoring them to bring their products onto like the U.S. market. Like uh, I've, I'm, I've brought uh, Lightning Coffee, for example, to uh, Unconfiscatable in Vegas. Uh, and I also did it at uh, Bitcoin Day in Naples. Uh, and I'm going to also be assist uh, attending um, Bitcoin Day in Miami. And we'll also have um, a lot of uh, coffee and some other products that that, uh, that are straight from Latin America that you can buy right now today uh, with Bitcoin. So that that's pretty much the what this organization is about. I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, I care deeply about uh, the economic uh, conditions of Latin America, and I I want people to. You know, I feel like every little grain of of sand that we like um, put together uh, helps uh, to to it helps Bitcoin and it helps also like uh, like people uh, in 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 those countries. So that's that's pretty much what I've been up to with Viva Bitcoin. Uh, it's super exciting. We're we're hoping to grow and uh, and have a lot more people join our space uh, to educate and and keep people you know uh, like uh, herald people onto the 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 orange bright future and how it keeps doing that <laughs> and how has uh how has these conversations gone because like i know you you basically mention um the idea that like it you know you you're latino you understand at least to on like a cultural sense or like what goes on in these countries that you understand the culture you understand at least a little better than maybe some uh, i hate to use the word but privileged people in america and so how come how come your focus is latin america is it because you guys are all spanish speaking or is it just like hey we're latinos we see the need for our people por la raza all that por good la- stuff <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, yeah. I mean, no, we're not exclusive. We're not trying to exclude anybody from our group. Um, but it, it is in Spanish, so so if you don't speak the language, it's going to be a little difficult for you to participate. Um, and yeah, so it, it, like I said, it came from sort of that vacuum that we saw in spaces and and in Bitcoin in general in the U.S. that um you know there there weren't enough like Hispanic voices. There are some people uh, here and there uh, that work for Swan, for example. I know many uh, Hispanic people that work there that. that have done great job a great job um that but but there is that that like um you know sort of vacuum like there's there's simply there's there's so many other spaces that go on every day and they're routinely like on x and so yeah that that's primarily the reason why and also because we believe that um in latin america like we are ripe for adoption so so i think that that's primarily the reason why we're we're doing that and yeah I mean, if you want to say that we're doing it for La Raza, that, that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have to stick together, right? Like, um, I, I would like to say something like, it's kind of like, um, it's a little negative, but I feel like Hispanic people in the U.S., um, th- we're not very, like, united. So when it comes to, um, like, financial education and, and things like that, so I feel like we have to, like, change that a little bit, right? Like, help each other out and then... And, um, you know, it's like there are many other cultures that, that help each other uh, economically. And I feel that that if we start educating people and, and seeing that we as, as Latin Americans can come together, um, it doesn't have to be a zero sum game. Right. Like they, we, we can we can educate everybody in, in the in the community and, and orange pill them and, you know, like help them like uh, achieve their financial uh, sovereignty. So so that's pretty much it. Love it. Okay. Someone in the chat says, um, local, local, loc. Yeah. He's, I'm pretty sure he's been it. local TX. Uh, it's really easy. Hispanics are poor. We don't have money, so we don't know how to invest. <laughs> what, what's your thoughts on this? On this? I mean, I mean, that's a little harsh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're developing, you know, you know, okay. I would like to phrase it like this. We, we are a poor, um, sort of like enclave of people right but our countries are very rich not only culturally but also in resources like you know you have paraguay like you have venezuela you have colombia every latin american country is rich in resources and it's been all of these like corrupt politicians and with the help of the imf that have like sort of pillaged our people and not to get too into like the left right thing but you know it's um it play it has played a huge role like collectivism in in Latin America, and so 
everybody in Latin America, or or rather, all the politicians in Latin America have have had the opportunity to bribe their people, right? And 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 they, it's been very easy for them to sort of like capture the minds of people and and obtain votes, and and sort of keep perpetuating the fiat game, right? Like, and, and that's something that I feel Bitcoin will change, and 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 I feel like Bitcoin is going to be the next liberator of of Latin America. Um, uh, you can see it, in, for example, in, in, in Argentina, like the change of how this is happening. Like there's there's a wave of people that are realizing that that the politicians have stripped them of all of their wealth, all of the money they have like worked so hard for. And yeah, we are poor. And so like making it out and climbing out of the, your social economic status in Latin America is supremely hard, supremely difficult. That's why we have so many migrants here in the U.S. because it's it's a land of opportunity still, in compared when when compared to Latin American countries. But I feel that that is changing. Uh, there are there's Bukele, there's Mille. I, I feel like we need to keep that going. And um, yeah, if Viva Bitcoin could be sort of like a little like a spotlight in the in the darkness in Latin America, like we, I mean, I'm I'm all for it. Um, yeah. And how and how has those conversations gone? Like I, I'm guessing you've had some of these conversations already. Do people, you know, it's interesting how like in America, in in the U.S., a lot of people are just so adamantly against Bitcoin, and then people with like hyperinflating currencies, like you know, I don't want to dox you, but I know where you're from, and I know that you, the, your local currency, or rather your home, uh, your where your origins come from just their currency got decimated. And so like, how are these conversations happening? Are do when you have these conversations with people, are they open to the idea or is it just like, Oh, this is a get rich quick scheme. Like I, I don't have time for this. I don't have any savings. No, no, no. It's the opposite. Like Latin American people are very receptive to the idea of Bitcoin. Like you said, because we we've had like hyperinflating currencies, right? Like in my country, the, the, the currency it's the native currency is it's, it's, it doesn't exist anymore. We we transact in dollars, and so people know. And and everybody that that I'm Venezuelan, right? Let's just put it out there. So everybody in Venezuela um, is very open to the idea of Bitcoin. Uh, the only the only thing I've in these conversations that we've had with uh, Latin American people is that one thing that we don't realize here in the U.S. is that Latin American people have a very short, like a uh, very uh, low uh, or high time preference, rather, right? Like they because the living conditions are so low that you don't think about the future. You don't, you can't really, you, you have to like work really hard. And then in order f to, for you to buy, like to, to afford rent and food. And that's pretty much it. So people are just thinking of the day to day. So it's like sort of like survival. Right. And, and so in these spaces that we've held, we've had people come up to us and say like, you know, when you start talking about all these lofty ideas about like how the separation of money and state and how Bitcoin makes you a self-sovereign individual, Latin American people aren't so receptive to that message I have found out, but there are different angles that you can attack them in. And, and the angle that I found out that it works is the idea of like a currency that cannot be printed because they understand inflation and they understand why most people understand why it happens right and so once you explain to them that bitcoin no one controls it like it's just a a a network that that um allows people to transact their their monetary energy not in those terms but they they immediately hold on to it and say like oh there might be something to this but but is that it i, I feel like that's one of the biggest obstacles that that we're gonna have to face as hispanics like in Bitcoin, orange filling our, our, our friends in and, and, and Latin America. It's going to be, how do we change the chip from going to, from a, from a, you know, thinking about an everyday survival situation to a future? Like that's the biggest obstacle that, that I see right now in my conversations. And, and, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from, at least from, from what I know with my family, uh, there's a very big culture of like bootstrapping yourself and, you know, not trusting the government and like, you know, working hard and, and trying to save and provide for your family. And these are all Bitcoin tenants. Like, this is all we talk about. It's mm -hmm. no one's going to come save you. Like you have to save yourself. You have to pay yourself first. You need to save in something that a government can't destroy. And there is so many examples, especially in Latin America, of course, everywhere around the world, even through the history of man itself, of governments abusing the cultures and stealing from the population. 
I think Bryson wanted wanted to. Or... Oh, he's muted. All right, what's up? Yeah, yeah, Bryson. Yeah, no, but it's like when you're talking about like inflation, the volatility of Bitcoin, like for us living in America, right, the most stable fiat currency, right, what does volatility look like for us? You know, yesterday up 10% ish until Coinbase went and did what Coinbase does and ruined everything good. Um, like, like if you're living in a Latin country and you've got, you know, 100% inflation every month, right, of course, you're going to want something like Bitcoin, right, because 10% inflation is nothing, right, as opposed to losing 99% of your wealth in some places in, in as short as a, a couple of months months time right and i think also by bringing bitcoin to latin countries you're going to well allow more people than ever could before to be able to transact because a lot of these people do not have bank accounts right so if you give them something like bitcoin or lightning or another you know second layer network right they, they can go and transact right you, you don't need all the documentation associated with the bank account and the overheads wow dude zoomer is killing it shouts out to the zoomer Amazing. intern this kid's smart. wait wait my faith in Zoomers have has been restored. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I thought they all had TikTok brain, but apparently not. Dude, with the ones that escape, they, they get it. <laughs> they get it. Anyways, Andres, uh, you guys are doing a podcast as well. Is it is it out yet or you're about to release it? What's what's the deal with that? It's not out yet. We're we're recording all of our spaces uh on on X and uh, eventually we're gonna we're gonna try to start releasing them on YouTube. And all the other like little clips of, of, of some interesting conversations we've had on on all the other platforms, uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, right? So we're growing. Um, it, it's you know you you you've worked for a startup on Bitcoin, so you know kind of you you kind of understand how how sometimes that takes time. Uh, so we're just getting started, uh, putting in the work, um, and and hopefully uh, you know in the future we're thinking of a very lofty. Um, uh, um, we, we have very lofty aspirations for Viva Bitcoin. Uh, you know, maybe a conference uh, coming up in Colombia. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, wow. So, leak yeah, it. Yeah. Leak it on yeah, Simply <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> leak it on Simply Bitcoin. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we do have uh, very committed individuals, uh, very talented. We have some coders in our group. Um, we have some very uh, talented people. And they're just, like they're all Bitcoiners. They're all they've all been in Bitcoin for Longer than three years, I would say four, so almost four. So, so you know, it, it's 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 a great um, it's a great thing that that's just like kind of like getting it's a baby cow if you want to say it. Right? We're starting to get on our four legs, uh, but it, it'll take some time. Yeah, baby deer legs. Uh, baby you're, deer you're... legs. <laughs> you <go. laughs> all right. So, Andres, just to be clear, uh, all the content's going to be in Spanish. Yes. Okay. All okay. Of it in Spanish. We might have some uh, like um, I just tried that. I, I, I'm, my brain, when you say Spanish, my brain goes Spanish. Uh, no, we're gonna. We might have some subtitles in English for some of our content, uh, but we really, I mean, yeah, we we really just are focusing in this on the Spanish uh, side of things. Uh, everybody, I mean, how many bilingual people are there in the U.S.? There's there's millions, right? So so we're going after them, and then obviously we have all the people in Latin America. In our spaces, we have people from. Cuba, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, Argentina. We have people from Central America. We have people, you know, Mexico. Uh, we've had people from El Salvador. So, so you know, we um, we we were just uh, doing that thing. Let's go. Well, awesome, Andres. Okay, last question I ask everyone: uh, What would be the final message you want to leave with the audience, or the final two sets? It could be about Viva Bitcoin. It could be be, be about Bitcoin in general. Could be about life. I don't know. Maybe Andres has some life advice. What's the last two sats for the audience? Okay, so we all know the price is pumping like crazy. Uh, it's hard to remain humble. Um, like uh, Vikingo, shout out to him. He's a hilarious uh, ex character or an ex anon. Just stay solvent, right? Like don't 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 jump into the exuberant boat and go crazy. Buy a Lambo. Do all these things. Like you know, think longer term. Um, this is not financial advice, but I personally, like once we like go beyond the all time high, I stop my sacking that that's been my strategy for like, wow the last bear. Week. I I'm not a bear, but I opportunity risk, right? Like, or I, I know, so it sounds weird, but I do. And, and whenever like all of the exuberance is gone, I start again, my stacking. So, so not financial advice. This is sort of what I've done. Um, just because I want to get the most out of my cut bucks, right? Like I want, uh, I want more, the most bang for my buck, uh, when it comes to purchasing Bitcoin, I want, I want as many sats as I could get. So, 
um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just uh, stay humble and remain solvent, as Vikingo says. Uh, you know, don't don't go crazy. Don't buy a Lambo. Uh, and also, we're getting girlfriends this year for sure. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Do not take on this advice. Continue to buy at all time high. There are historical I said, I said that's what I, I said that, that was what I, what I did. That's my personal strategy. I, I did not you, keep stacking forever Bro. and ever. All right. Uh, I, who knows? We don't know what's going on with the price, but hey, you know, coming back down to this all time high, it may never happen. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, uh, you know, adding FOMO here. I don't know, but. I'd be stacking. I yeah, don't listen to this guy. Yeah, I'm buying I'm buying uh, twenty one dollars uh, of Bitcoin when it hit all time high just in spite of Andres now. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, Zoomer's on fire. I like this kid. I like this kid. Reverse psychology, reverse psychology. Yeah, you tell yeah, people yeah. Not to do it, they'll do it. So I, I'm, I'm pumping your bags for you, so there you go. Thanks. <laughs> Let's go. All right, man. Well, uh Bryson, first and foremost, thank you for showing up, guys. Be nice to Bryson, our new Zoomer intern. He's gonna be handling the Simply Bitcoin social media we're gonna put some training wheels on him for the next week or so but we threw him to the fire he absolutely slayed it on today's show as as andres said you know it, it does make us hopeful that this bitcoin message will reach the younger generation i i say it all the time you know we all kind of still in our minds have this idea that that the boomers are the largest generation but they had children and the Zoomers and the Millennials, we outnumber the Boomers by, I, I don't know, this actual statistic, someone could fact check me on this. We outnumber them in, in regards to individuals. They have all the capital, but there's more of us than there are of them. And if we can get everyone stacking Bitcoin, then this is the message. So we're going to hopefully, hopefully, you know, uh, start to break into the Zoomer market and we'll get more, more broke college kids stacking Bitcoin. So shouts out to you, Bryson. And, you know, tell you, tell your girlfriend's dad that we appreciate him hipping you to simply Bitcoin. And, and hopefully he's like, Hey man, like I saw you on the show today. Yeah. We are, we, we are getting girlfriends. Look, that- <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, there's hope. <laughs> Wait, the Zoomer has a girlfriend and we don't. Wrecked. We're yeah. wrecked. <laughs> All right, That's Bryson. Looking good. <laughs> well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming on, Bryson. Um, you, you guys will on. see him on the Twitter. We'll probably bring him on some other times as well. But absolutely slayed it for today. All right, Andres, where can people find you? What do you want people to go check out? Thanks for coming on. It's a great yeah, show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, Son of Sads on Twitter uh, or X. I'm out there slaying uh, the the demons, the fiat demons every day. A uh, little spicy over there, uh, but we all we all like to get spicy on, on X, right? So yeah, there and check out uh, Viva Bitcoin's uh, website at vivabitcoin.com. Um, we'll be putting out some more content in the future. It'll be in Spanish. Uh, so if you're a, if you're a Latino in here, please go check us out and come in, onto the spaces. Every uh, Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, we're holding a, a space, you know, for educating people and spreading the word. Um, you know, like it's it's the Satoshi's work. That's what we're doing. And and just to be clear, the website I have is viva-bitcoin.com. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Viva-bitcoin.com. Yeah, yes. All right, guys. All right. Well, that is today's show. Thanks for coming on, Andres. Stick around for a little bit. Anyways, guys, you already know the deal. Smash the like button, share this content, share all Bitcoin content so more people understand why we Bitcoin. It is going to become a heavy lift for us this year. Everyone, I, I'm convinced everyone has an opinion on Bitcoin. Everyone's heard about Bitcoin. Well, it's our job, not only here at Simply Bitcoin, but you guys as individuals to continue to spread the signal, continue to incept the ideas of freedom money into your friends and family, continue to get people into the life raft that is Bitcoin, and also make sure that they don't go down the shitcoin rabbit holes. Anyways, guys, we'll be back tomorrow, same time as usual, 12, 15 p.m. Eastern time. We do have a special surprise for you guys tomorrow you guys are gonna like this one you guys have been talking about it so uh nico will be back on tuesday but we what the show goes on the show goes on anyways guys peace out i'm your host for today opti we are simply bitcoin and we'll be back tomorrow peace out episode was brought to you by bitcoinwell.com a bitcoin only platform on a mission to enable financial independence <laughs>